Hello everybody, welcome to the final part of Let's Play Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap. So, yeah, um, today we're just going to be doing all of the remaining things we need to get 100%, or as close to 100% as possible. Uh, on camera, I think I am going to show off uh, some little bonuses, like areas where you can get a lot of money and items. Um... I don't know, it's been a minute since I recorded the part that we're starting off with now. Uh, but, yeah, I will show off how to get, like, certain treasures and hearts, and at least I think I am. I honestly don't recall what happened, and I'm recording this without even looking at that. Uh, but, yeah, but one of the other main aspects of getting 100% are the... I don't know what they're called. Um, so, for lack of a better term, we're just going to call them Secret Stones. And you get one by going to an unknown area for each character. So since I ended the game with Human, we're going to be getting Humans first. Unfortunately, I do not recall um, much that went down in this unknown area. But the fact that I can't remember much about it must mean I did not have too much trouble with it. Uh, certain areas are a lot harder than others. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about human, so just enjoy it. Also, the Tasmanian Sword, it is a lifesaver. It allows you to switch forests between animals, or, well, I say animals, but then there's human. So, I mean, it allows you to switch forms between characters. It's so good! So good. Thank 
So now we have Lizardmen's unknown area. I just recorded it like a few hours ago and I honestly cannot even like tell you what even happened there. I just recall that it didn't take me as long as other areas did, which I guess is a good thing. Uh, I'm shocked they didn't try to make it like a little more difficult in the fact that you know, Lizard Man doesn't have a shield. I mean, Hawkman doesn't have one either, but Hawkman also has flight, so you don't really have to worry about that. But, yeah, um, they didn't really take advantage of that as much as you think they would have. But yeah, like I said, I don't really remember much about Lizard Man, so just enjoy it for what it is, I guess.
Oh, wait, no, I do remember uh, one thing for Lizard Man, and that's the last screen. So how you're supposed to get through this area is you just time your movements well enough so that you don't bounce up and destroy the blocks. So that when you make it to the right of this uh, area, you're able to platform on the blocks to get to the door. However, if you have the Magic Saber equipped, you don't have to worry about that. At all. On one hand, I feel kind of bad for cheesing it, but on the other hand, hey, I mean, it, it wouldn't be in the game if they didn't want me to use it now, would it? And right here we have Mouse Man's Unknown Area, which I tried to do earlier in the game, and it didn't quite work out. But now that I have better armor and better skills at the game, ultimately it wasn't that bad. Though I will say, this is definitely the hardest out of all of the Unknown Areas. For the most part in these areas you want to take your time like sort of advance slowly and you will more than likely succeed in relatively quick fashion you know just stay careful don't rush but with mouse man you actually do kind of want to rush things at least as far as the second screen is concerned well, up until the end of the second screen, but yeah, when I finally just decided to just start going full force on the second screen, it actually wasn't that bad, and it almost seems like that area is set up to be done as fast as possible. The better armor is an absolute lifesaver, though, because at no point was I at any real danger of dying. This was as close to Royal Land 3 as I'm going to get in, like, any other game. Because, yeah, in that game, Wario is invincible. So the only thing that can really mess you up is just losing progress. Which is definitely the case on the second screen, because if you miss a jump, you fall back down to the first screen. But yeah, 
Thank God for the better armor. Right here we have Fishman's Unknown Area, which was not that hard. The enemies were the hardest thing about this, but yeah, it wasn't all that bad. I thought there would be a little more, like, just underwater areas, but nah, aside from one, that was pretty much it. So, yeah, not, not much to really say about Fishman's. It's probably the easiest one. Like, no particular screen gave me too much trouble compared to uh, Mouse Man, Lizard Man, or even Human. I believe, anyway. Like I said, I don't remember much about when I last recorded, uh, or when I recorded Humans, uh, a known area, but I don't think I was able to breeze through it. But yeah, Fish Man, I mean, well, with any unknown area, as long as you make sure to equip the best uh, defensive items you can at the start of each one, you really don't have to worry too much about what they throw at.
And here we have Beast Man. I, I just always call him Lion because, I mean, that's what he is. At first, I was so worried that it was going to be a maze, but thankfully, it was not. And for the most part, this one wasn't all that bad either. I will say it's a little harder than Fish Man's, though also I think the main reason I was able to get through Fish Man's with as much ease as I did is because I had so many uh, items or magic items at my disposal. But yeah, uh, Mr. Lion is like my favorite of the characters because his sword attack is so good and his shield is excellent. There's really not much you have to worry about. And the last screen, I admit, is difficult on its own, but with a combo of the magic saber and the uh, armor that makes you invincible to lava, it's super easy.
And then we have Hawkman's Unknown Area, which was really fun. Uh, once again, if you have items, it will be easy, not to mention the flight is excellent. But now you have to watch out for water because Hawkman takes damage from water. But just like with most of the other unknown areas before him, as long as you take your time, you'll be fine, for the most part. I mean, those yellow enemies at the end were kind of wrecking my face. But still, like, as long as you just sort of move forward only enough for one, maybe even two to spawn in and try to jump you, you'll be fine. So by grabbing all six, yeah, six of the stones, we've unlocked a couple things. Uh, first being the ability to get the Gallic Sword, which is the best weapon in the game, I believe. Like, yeah, it is tied for um, attack strength with the Legendary Sword, I believe, but it has an added effect where enemies are more likely to drop magic items, which are very good to have. Oh, and uh, my mistake, actually. Uh, you get the ability to grab it once you get the five stones related to uh, the non-human uh, characters. So, yeah, uh, having that would have been very handy for the final area of the game and boss. But I managed without it. Yeah, Gallic Sword, really good to have. In addition to that, we also unlock boss refights. Him throughout the village, with most of these being in the area around the windmill, there are hidden doors you can go through to fight all the previous bosses. There's no real point to this, aside from the fact that it's a neat little Easter egg and you can get money, but there's way better spots to get money from and human kind of wrecks the faces of all of these bosses though that could also be the equipment i was carrying <laughs> regardless it's still a fun little easter egg
all of the remaining equipment that I'm missing, um, those can just be found in different shops, uh, none of which are particularly hidden, just hard to get to. Uh, off the top of my head, I know I'm missing the entire set of crystal uh, equipment, which can be found at the very top of the windmill. But yeah, you need a lot of money for all of those. So that's pretty much it for everything that can be done. I, Like I said, um, I might not have all the equipment, but for uh, all of the crystal uh things as well as like I think I'm missing one it's either one bit of armor or one shield I can't quite remember off the top of my head but regardless I need a lot of money for those and I would rather not just get to a big money spot namely the mecha dragon's lair or the boss room where the mecha dragon was fought and just like traveling there getting as much money as possible then exiting the game, then going back in and repeating that process. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not really feeling that right now. But aside from just grinding money to get all of those, that's pretty much it for the game. Though I will show off everything in the gallery. Just a lot of concept art, gifts, and audio sessions. You get to watch the people record the music of the game, which was excellent, by the way. So, yeah, um, that was Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap. Took me a minute to finish up everything, but I'm glad I finally did. Greatly enjoyed the game. I just wish it were a bit longer, and um, like some of the same people who had high praise for this game had high praise for Monster Boy as well which sold like what I think the number that those devs gave out was like it sold eight times as much on the switch as it did on the other like uh, platforms combined. That's amazing. Not to mention the director of the original Wonder Boy games like way back when for the like, you know, old school Sega consoles who helped out um, Lizard Cube and Dot Emu with this Wonder Boy remake also helped out the Monster Boy devs because that's sort of a spiritual successor to the Wonder Boy series. And I do plan to LP that in the future. So I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed this LP. Uh, sorry it took so long for me to get back to it to wrap it up. And I will see you all next time with something else. Goodbye.